taking your phone calls. 888-554-5537. 888-5-KILLER. To weigh in on any of the cases that we follow for you each and every single day here on the Hidden Killers podcast and the True Crime Today family. Let's go to one of those calls. Hi. Hey, Tony. This is Christy from Los Angeles. Um, just real quick on Brian Koberger. So really interesting hearing you talking with guests about potential connections between Koberger and the BTK Dennis Rader. Um, the more I was thinking about it as I was listening to your interviews, I remembered that BTK, uh, one of his things that he would do was that he would take um, li- uh, licenses from his victims as his trophies, and then he would mail the licenses to the cops. Um, I remember that that stood out, and if we recall, um, Koberger also took a license or an identification from somebody Mm. at that house. So I wonder if that's another potential connection. I mean, sure, that could also just be a thing killers do, but... It is interesting. I mean, I know um, they don't have, it's not the exact same type of copycat kind of crime. BTK, I think he would strangle his victims primarily. Um, But also, who's to say that that wasn't Koberger's initial MO? And then he was surprised that Kaylee and Maddie were in the same bed. And so you can't really strangle one person. The person is there trying to, like, fight you off. So perhaps he had to quickly pivot and brought a knife as a backup or to threaten someone with a knife, like that kind of thing. And it got really turned around. Um, total wild speculation, but that's interesting, no? Hmm. I uh, I would agree. Uh, we, yeah. we have seen that in the evidence report. Uh, it did not say whose uh, IDs that Koberger had collected. Um, other than they were connected to the King Road house. So one would have to assume uh, very likely the victims. Um, but yeah, the BTK would also uh, collect uh, quite a few things from people's homes and would have trophies and had a little hidden compartment that he would hide them in, uh, in his house in Park City. You know, somebody who is studying criminology, that part just, I don't understand doing that. Doesn't that just automatically link you to a crime if you've stolen somebody's identity or they're stolen their ID card? I mean, it just it puts you so much closer to a specific person. Why would you do that? It it is. It seems like, okay. if you want to completely get busted here. Yeah, let's take this. It's very bizarre that uh, collecting things like that or or really anything uh, that would be linked back to the actual people that you murdered, why you would have that trophy or what the purpose of that trophy is. Very likely, and a lot of times, serial killers and things like that, they're they're searching for something to feel. They're searching for, I mean, a lot of get that sexual gratification out of murdering someone and watching them suffer. BTK certainly did. As far as we know, Koberger did not. There was no evidence of any sort of sexual assault or anything of that nature with that murder. So that is something where it does differ uh, a little bit. But the point of, of going back to why they collect those things, it's so they can try and recreate that experience uh, after the fact that you know their victim is now dead. Bundy would return to the sites of where some bodies actually were at times. Uh, It's it's disturbing. There's many people who do that sort of thing and sometimes just having the object that's connected, they use it as essentially, while the rest of the world uses Pornhub, they're getting the the driver's license out or the, you know, trinket that they stole from the house. Yeah, and what is so bizarre to me is to steal a trinket have something in your possession that could link you to the crime, but yet you go to this great length to clean the, you know, any evidence yeah. off your car or yourself. It it just, in my brain, it doesn't make any sense. No, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but the whole crime itself doesn't make any sense why no. they're doing it. So the, you got to look at it through their prism of what they think makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And it's going to be a whole jumble of, 
wrong <laughs> completely. Let's, yeah, and uh, it's hard for for people like you and I who we this is not something we would ever do. It's really hard to look at it through that lens. It just doesn't. It's all distorted and cracked, and it doesn't make any sense. It, it is, and that's what makes it so hard to you know to understand any uh, of these people for what they did or how they did it or why they did it. Um, is it like getting a, a concert t-shirt? You want to, you know, pull it out of the laundry and see it every time and go, oh, I had a great time at that concert. Is that what these trinkets are? To a certain extent, but it's usually much darker and for sex. <laughs> right. uh, or or to, uh, Bundy, him, Ted Bundy, would sometimes return to the scene of his crimes and engage in sexual acts of necrophilia with the mutilated bodies and would further oh, mutilate God. them. Um, that's what made him even more... Uh, his acts and his ability to maintain the seemingly normal exterior for many, many years is what made him so elusive uh, and, and such a weird study when you're trying to understand who this person is or was. Uh, but yeah, he would go and do that. So yeah. People that, so that, that I hope answers the question of why people take this shit. Um, it, it's essentially to do, you know, it's, it's jerk off material uh, with your sick criminal mind. Um, absolute they, deviance yeah 100 percent uh let's go to another phone call if you want to weigh in 8885 killer 888-554-5537 to weigh in hi hi tony this is drew from iowa uh I, i've called a couple times and and uh um big fan of your show i know you've actually played some of my stuff in the past and uh, i'm talking about the Koberger case right now i was just listening to the uh the one you had with Bob Mata about about Koberger and uh, more specifically the uh, investigative grand jury in Pennsylvania that involves his parents. Um, so, only thing I wanted to weigh in with, um, you know, I'm a I'm a military guy. My my civilian college education is in is in law and pa as a paralegal, and I have that experience in both the civilian and military application. And um, my thoughts were on the military side. We have something called collateral misconduct, and it's when um, there may have been laws broken that didn't necessarily pertain to the, the main crime we're talking about. So the example would be, uh, obviously, Koberger's charged with the, the homicide of four individuals in Idaho, but this grand jury, this, made it, this investigative grand jury is convening in, in Pennsylvania. So my thoughts are, is there a chance that this grand jury may be delving into not the murders in Idaho, but did he break any laws on his way back to Pennsylvania or in Pennsylvania that do relate to some extent to Idaho? And, and maybe the whole thing is unrelated, and I know we've talked about the Smithers case and, and things like that, but maybe we're, we're looking into, okay, what laws did he break in other places besides Idaho, but they were on his fleeing from from the Idaho murders. I mean, then do we look at more of a, a federal case because we're we're dealing in interstate commerce where we're breaking laws while we're fleeing between two states uh, and breaking the law the entire time? Um, anyway, that was just a, a thought I had. Thought it was worth mentioning, and, and you know, any any better legal experts than me that would weigh in on your on your show would I would love to listen. So anyway, thank you again. Next. Uh, that's a very interesting one. And we actually have Bob Mata on all throughout this week, I believe. Yes. Um, with a lot of, uh, his insight into this, uh, what, what's interesting to me is yes, you have to have, uh, a crime committed in that jurisdiction for a grand jury to be convened. And this keep in mind was an investigative grand jury. It was not an indicting grand jury, meaning they couldn't indict anybody. It was more so to get information. Uh, so there's two crimes that were committed, not one of them, not necessarily by Koberger, but enough to put a grand jury together and question those around Koberger to see if there is any sort of connection, which is crossing your T's and dotting your I's. And he may have absolutely nothing to do with the other murder that's being investigated in Pennsylvania. However, if they, so that's reason. That's one reason they could have gotten the parents in there. That and it was speculation as to uh, why they were in there to begin with. The crime that Koberger actually committed in uh, in Pennsylvania was concealing of evidence, 
And that's what they watched him do. They were yeah. on his tail. He was he was taking evidence. He was putting it into baggies. He was trying to hide it and put it into neighbors' garbage cans. He was cleaning out the back of his car uh, and gloves and, gloves and all of that wearing the gloves in the grocery stores. So he was actively trying to conceal evidence. That in itself is a crime. So if they needed to just get the parents together on that, because the crime was committed in that jurisdiction, they could have done that and then questioned them, which they very likely did, about what what was he like? Tell us what happened from the moment your uh, the moment the, the father picked him up in uh in Pennsylvania or in Idaho and then drove all the way back. And then the weeks that he was back at your house, tell us in great detail, every single thing that happened and uh, all of that. So that's very likely why that, that took place. Uh, very easy to speculate. And you know, what did it make for a much better story? If he was involved in another murder, obviously a horrible thing to say or think, but the sensationalism of it, um, you know, it would be very interesting if he was, and, and and quite honestly, not shocking either. Someone like this, he committed a murder of four people on his first try. That, yeah. number one, seems almost unbelievable, but maybe he did. Maybe it just was what that was, but it would not be surprising if there were other people he victimized, maybe not murdered. We already are learning about that with him installing the security camera, uh, at, at the time of friend's house and the uh, the possible break-ins uh, as well. So I, I, I don't know. I think we're going to learn a lot more about uh, Brian here in the coming uh, weeks and months and years because this is not going to go away anytime soon. No, and it would be really interesting if more people stepped up and, and talked about their interactions with him because you know he had to have interacted with somebody. Yes, we were going through the pandemic Things were probably online a lot of the time, but being in forensics and, and criminology, I would imagine he had labs that he had to go in for. People have interacted with this man. Oh, yeah. A lot of people have. And everything we've heard is very much in line with kind of sociopathic type behavior. Where, yeah, you but know, I, I expect there's more. Oh, I expect there's going to be a lot more. I mean, it, it sounds like he, as I said earlier, I, I think he's an individual who was searching for an identity, didn't quite know what it was, and he... He tried out many different suits, if you will, of who he wants to be. Never really quite settling on anything other than uh, allegedly a killer. And I think even in that, even in being a killer, still, I don't think quite comfortable in his own skin. I think still even there, taking bits and pieces from others to try and make up who he is. is an individual who probably will never find out who he, he really is other than a very twisted human being. Uh, that's that's missing something uh, innate in, in his being. Uh, if you want to go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, there's so many other ways you could go to try to find yourself. You know, go practice yoga, go meditate, go be an actor, <laughs> go yeah. to college. I, what? I don't Do care. Yeah, just don't go and uh, kill a bunch of college kids. Uh, if you want to weigh in on this and what your thoughts are, 888-554-5537. 8885 killer is the phone number we would love to hear from you. Stacy, I'm Tony. Stay with us.